After posting the best record of all time for a team that was under 500 halfway through the season, here's why the Boston Celtics are finally built for the NBA Finals. Last year in 2021's playoffs, the Seas didn't have Jalen Brown, and two out of the three years before that, Boston got one or two wins from reaching the Finals. This year in 2022, with rookie head coach Ime Udoka's elite game planning on both ends of the court, and a trade deadline acquisition in Derek White, who they've gone 20 and 6 with, this video gives you every detail on the chances of Beantown throwing a parade later this spring with the most talented duo in their franchise's history. Right before that, just 10.1% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll give you a follow back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are still at the beginning of their NBA lifespans, but they're no longer wide-eyed up-and-comers with only a bit of playoff experience under their belts. Jason's made the conference finals twice throughout his career. While you can't forget, Jalen's been around since the Isaiah Thomas days, having made the NBA's Final Four three times already throughout his young career. The team's Robin and 1A scoring option, Jalen Brown, is currently playing the best basketball of his career. Five games in April saw him average 26 points each night on 54% shooting from the field. More impressively, in the regular season's final month, Brown took six shots from beyond the arc per game and knocked down an elite 41.4% of them. We could go into the film room and look at how Brown dropped a cool 50 points against Orlando, one of this year's highest single-game scoring performances. However, given the Celtics are about to be in the midst of a heated first-round battle with the Nets, it's more appropriate we evaluate Jalen's operation against Brooklyn. This game we're about to look at took place just over a month ago on March 6th, right here, with Steve Nash's defense not communicating. Jalen's left wide open near the logo, and as he catches the pass, watch the elusive footwork to fake the 1-2 step into a 3, which gets Bruce Brown thinking spot-up jumper. With Bruce out of position, Jalen's quick first step gets right by him, and even if Kevin Durant went all out on this play, he'd have no chance of bothering Jalen's overpowering take through traffic. Next, a baseline inbound sees Brown cut back to the left wing, and Brown's athleticism is so intimidating that a simple jab step with his eyes selling drive to the basket gets him all the space he needs for a beautiful leaning back three-pointer. Nets fans are going to say that James Johnson isn't on their team anymore, which is true, but putting Kevin Durant on JB didn't stop the man from attacking either. This quick burst with Durant on an island right here gets KD so out of position that Jalen has the space to grab his own rebound and find Marcus Smart in the corner for a four-point play. Moving to the other end, check out this passing lane anticipation as Jalen's roaming as a safety on the strong side and blitzes Durant from out of nowhere, leading to a beautiful two-man game in transition from Jalen and Peyton Pritchard. Again displaying his top-notch clamps, the Celtics shooting guard hunts down and swipes the rookie Cameron Thomas breaking Cam's back and finishing with a ruthless jam. Watch this reverse split action, if you will, drawn up by Ime Udoka, where instead of the big dishing from the paint, he's dishing from beyond the perimeter. Tice signals to Pritchard to initiate the action. Horford sets the hammer screen for Brown. Jalen jab steps and drives to his opposite side, while Al pops to the top of the key. Brown kicks it out, and give credit to the Celtics legend at center for knocking it down. Jalen's become known for his scoring, but smooth facilitations like this one, where he spins through the lane, draws three defenders, and leaves it for his big in the paint, are dime droppings becoming more and more common for him, and those plays open up more space for his scoring. In terms of that bucket getting, whether it's Euro steps and floaters in traffic, or newly polished pull-ups off the dribble, everything about Brown's game looks more comfortable this year. Over 66 outings, Jalen shot a career-high 54.4% from two-point range, and also career bests by far in his efficiency from both 3 to 10 feet and 0 to 3 feet. While that film room looks smooth, things weren't always looking so good for the season in 2022. Boston scuffled early in the season, questions persisted about whether Tatum and Brown could coexist, to the point where some were calling for the team to break up the young duo. But the Jays and their teammates responded by pulling off one of the greatest second-half turnarounds in NBA history, finishing as the number two seed in the Eastern Conference at 51-31. Reflecting on Boston's roller coaster year, 
Jalen admitted that all the noise he and Tatum dealt with early in the year may have strengthened an already solid relationship. Brown told NBC Sports Boston's Abby Chin in a one-on-one -on -one interview that aired on Thursday, quote, you don't really think about it, especially when you're in the middle of it right now or about to start something like the playoffs, but I think it has grown. Somebody asked a question in the media recently, like, has all the media attention between you and Jason kind of made you guys closer? And we were fine before. A lot of media reports were saying that we weren't friends. I don't know where that came from. I think a lot of people were just making stuff up. We were fine. And I think because of that, it made us maybe a little bit closer in a sense, in a weird way. I guess in a sense, to answer your question, our relationship has grown maybe because of that. Meanwhile, speaking on KD and Kyrie, Coach Ime Udoka for the Celtics said, quote, They have two extremely high-level scores that have seen everything, seen every coverage and every scheme, and still do it at a high level. You've got to understand, they're going to make tough shots, they're going to go on runs, more so, it's continue to do what we've done all year. Understanding how we're going to attack them, the type of shots we want to give up, and the amount of work we want to make them have to do. The Nets don't run a lot of stuff with shot makers and ISO engines like Durant and Irving. They really don't have to. Brooklyn clocked in with a respectable 113.2 offensive rating by the end of their soap opera season, but they've been even better with both future Hall of Famers on the court at the same time. Over 523 minutes in 17 games, their shared offensive rating is 122.8. With his length and size, KD can get a shot up against any defender, Kyrie and his bag are an obvious problem. The Celtics won three out of four against the Nets in the regular season, but the epic battle on March 6th featured both of Brooklyn's superstars on the floor at the same time, and Boston won 126-120 on the back of Jason Tatum's season-high 54 points, with Durant hitting 12 of his 21 field goals for 37 points and Irving chipping in 19. So here's my prediction for Boston against Brooklyn. If Williams gets healthy, I have the Celtics in five. However, the unpredictability of whether or not the Time Lord's going to play gives the Nets a chance to make this series competitive. Boston's personnel 1 through 15, the fact that they own a 20 and 6 record with trade deadline acquisition Derek White in the lineup, their number one ranked NBA defense, advanced offensive play sets, and leadership from coach Ime Udoka, you can feel comfortable in the C's getting the job done. How far will the Celtics go in your opinion though? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says, I'm definitely most excited for the first round rematch between the Nets and Celtics. Boston has been on an absolute tear in the second half of the year. Meanwhile, Brooklyn finally has their two superstars fully healthy to make a run. This will be a tight series, but I think Celtics in 6-2. Pause to read the rest of Ona's great take. Appreciate every single answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.